Gentlemen, welcome back to the mess, which is my desk. And actually, my desk is a bit messy, but we got something really cool on the desk. Now, a couple of days ago, you would have seen me doing the very unceremonious unboxing of the mini Skywalker. Now, if you think back, I did a video and I'll put a little link in the top right hand corner over the buying decision, whether I bought this from Banggood or Hobby King. And I actually chose to buy it from Banggood. And ironically, it was here faster than what it would have been if I bought the model from Hobby King Europe. And by the way, I'm based in the United Kingdom, if you couldn't tell from my terrible Bristolian accent. Now, with that said, the purpose of this video is to take a look at the build so far. So let's start with the not so obvious piece, which is the tail fin. Now, the more I looked at this tail fin, the more I realized that it definitely need, did need some reinforcing. So what I've been and done, let me just make sure that you can see this on the camera, all right? Yes, you can is that I noticed there was a tiny little groove in here for a carbon rod, but there wasn't one supplied. Uh, I did have some spare rods from another model which I managed to smash up, so uh, I cut that in uh, and I've just laid it down and CA glued it in there. And then the more I thought about it again, uh, is that I've also put another carbon rod all the way across here. Now, you may be thinking carbon fiber rods are expensive, they are not. You can buy little packs of them, and let me grab a pack off the side here. You can buy packs of these, which are about two mils by 50 centimeters long, uh, or packs of five, and you can see I've already been in pillaged some from this one, uh, for about £2.88, so about $5 off Banggood, and I'll put a link to those underneath the description. And I use loads of these, loads and loads of them. So. In this one, there wasn't a placement for this rod, uh, and I decided that it was a good idea to put another carbon rod across the tail fin. Again, it's a it's a top mounted fin, so the extra bit of a support I felt was a really really good idea. Then moving along to the wing, now it did come with this little wooden motor mount, which was going to well, I presume was supposed to glue on the back of there. I really did not like that idea. So what I did instead, and I'm looking for a grey part on my desk. Oh, there we go, not so messy on my desk. Uh, I was looking for um, a motor mount, which I went onto Thingiverse, and I'll put screenshots of both of these up on your screen for you. And also the links to these parts are in the video description. But And also note, if you don't have a 3D printer, you can get these printed off. There's like a squillion places across the world. Well, where you can just send them, the, send them the files and they'll be able to print them for you. Now, the first one, well, I printed them both off at the same time, to be honest, but the, the idea of both of these is that the hole underneath uh, is where the uh, spar goes through, uh, where you then put your elastic bands around the outside. Now, I had a look at this one, and it looks really, really good uh, on the Thingiverse, but... The reality is, is that when I looked at the AXN one, I liked that one a lot more. And the reason for that is because there was a lot less chopping required. So if you think about that one, is that I would have had to chop into that piece there to make it fit. And then there would have been a lot of tweaking. So yeah, that one would work great. Again, the, motor, the mountain holes on the back are... Uh, ideal for a mini quadcopter motor and you'll see that there's plenty of uh, give it well plenty that those holes there are big enough so that you could put the quadcopter in any orientation you wanted uh, but I had that one and again this is why I printed them both I didn't know which one I was going to like the most but the one which I went for was this one here so coming back to the wings is that that motor mount will push against the wing and of course the wing is also main, held down with elastic bands. Now if we turn the wing upside down, you'll, number one you'll notice that I've not put the servos in yet. And I am just looking around for my desk. And um, shame on me. Absolute shame on me. I'm going to have to use some of those HXT500 ones. I really don't like using these ones. And I'm 100% sure this is going to come back and bite me in the ass. Uh, if you excuse the term. Uh, because... Uh, these servos are not great, but sticking those 9 gram Tower Pro ones in here 
is probably a little bit of overkill. But like I said, uh, hindsight in a couple of days time when we get it all up in the air uh, may or may not come true whether I should have put tower pro metal geared ones in here. Anyway, with that aside, it did come with a wing spar, which goes from right off the screen uh, all the way up to here, and I've, that's glued in, and there is just a little bit of transparent sellotape across the top. And then I was chatting to Andrew, uh, and then he suggested about keeping the wing loading as low as possible, and I'm thinking, mm, I'm still going to stick a 1.3 battery in it, uh, 3S, of course. Uh, so I did put another piece of carbon fibre uh, all the way across there and that's one, mini, one millimeter by four millimeters and that's just CA'd in. Uh, so I've got the servos to go on that one and of course I haven't done anything with the anerons yet and that tip which came which was buckled has pretty much straightened itself out. Oh uh, the other thing which I need to do is put some blenderm tape uh, not only on the anerons but also on the elevator as well. So let me put the wing to one side. Now this brings us nicely on. Oh, mind the quadcopter parts. You'll find that about that at a later date. And you'll also find out why that one's hanging off. Uh, good fun, put it that way. Right, anyway, coming back to the topic. So this is our fuselage. Now we'll work from the front and go backwards. So by the way, putting all these parts together is actually really, really easy. Uh, I just left it to glue overnight. So we'll go, go with the front first, uh, is the, I don't even know what make or model that camera is. Uh, it was just one of the cameras which I bought a while ago. Uh, I know it's a CCD camera, because uh, the quality is really, really good on it. Um, and I am gonna make, if that will stay there, I am gonna make a little shroud to go over the top of it as well. So it's a little bit more aerodynamic uh, and also protected just in case of a unscheduled landing. Now, when we look underneath, I've just put the hot glued the cable in there. That will go round to uh, the video transmitter, which is not on my desk, but there will be a little uh, video transmitter, and my plan was just to mount it right here on the side, which I know is not the most attractive option, but uh, those little video transmitters do get hot, uh, and my thinking is, is that if it's on the outside, it will get maximum air flow, air flow across it, and in fact, I will recess it into the side a little bit as well, uh, so it doesn't impact the aerodynamics too much. Now, looking into the hole, well, in fact, can you see my obvious mistake yet? I can tell you I can see it a mile off now because I did it. Uh, these rods, I think they were two different lengths, so the one at the back looks a lot longer than the other one. Um, in fact, I don't know if they really were two lengths. No, actually, they're the same length, they just look a bit odd. Um, I will be going for a 1.3 3S battery for the front. Now, I haven't done anything with the CFG yet. All I know is that checking the manual, it needs to be 35 millimeters from the leading edge of the wing. Uh, I haven't even tried balancing this yet because I haven't even put the rudder, so, uh, sorry, the elevator servo in yet, and I haven't put the servos in the wings yet. I haven't even put the wings on the top uh, yet. So I will be doing that later. Uh, inside, in fact, let me just go fish this battery out. And I do have a 1.5 3S battery, which I may use instead if we can handle it. Now for the ESC, which I don't know whether you're going to be able to see in there, uh, it's a Turnigy 18 amp uh, basic um, ESC. The reason I went, I went for that one and not one of the other ones which I've got here is purely because weight. This one is super, super thin uh, and uh, I don't intend for this model to be doing anything crazy. I'm after performance uh, and longevity, if that makes sense. So I want nice long flights. Uh, and I won't be ragging the nuts off it, which is always the la famous last words for myself. But I, I'm not intending this one to be going and doing loops and stuff like that. It's supposed to be just purely for an FPV platform uh, as a, just generally as just a little bit of fun. Now for the receiver, I will be going for and will be using to start with uh, the VAR42. Uh, and the reason for that, that, there's no rudder, there's four channels on there and it means that I can split the ailerons onto separate channels 
uh, and have the eleva uh, elevator in a separate channel. So if I want to do maybe a little bit of flap braking, for example, to get the speed out of her, I could do that with this receiver. Obviously, later on, if I decide to put a stabilizer in here uh, or a, a NAS A32 board, I can mount it here on the side, um, but I will need definitely need a different receiver because I will either need SBUS or CPPM, so it'll probably be a D4R2 uh, receiver which I use for that. Now for the motor, I've been trying to keep this build as cheap as possible, so I did have a DYS race edition SC2205 2300 kV motor. Now this motor is rated all the way from 2S to 4S, uh, and I will be running mine on 3S. Okay, so nice in the middle. Uh, the propeller is nothing fantastic, it is a straight 5040 gem fan. Uh, and by the way, before you give me any grief in the comments, I know it's a crappy quadcopter blade. But like I said, I'm trying to keep everything um, short, sweet, uh, and is as inexpensive as possible for this build. So, And I'm sure it would just be like you, where you just reuse parts which you have available to you. Now looking at that motor mate, now let me get this around on the camera and again I'm just going to make sure that you can see this okay. So while it might not be 100% in focus, and I will include screenshots at the old photographs at the end for you, uh, is that this is actually the AXN mount. And I don't know if you can see that grey piece just there, and that's probably not in focus, but there's a grey piece in there which I had to trim out the frame a little bit for, is that that is actually mounted inside there. And the rod here for the elastic bands goes all the way through that. Uh, and I didn't use the supplied glue to hold that in uh, because I was after pure strength. Uh, I used goop glue in there. And I'm sure you've seen me unboxing many a packet or many a tube of goop glue. And then the last piece which I'm going to cover is the bottom. I have put some glass uh, reinforced tape, uh, strength packaging tape down the down the bottom of the model and then just quickly covered it up with a bit of white uh, packaging tape uh, to make her look a little bit more pretty. Now as far as fitment goes everything seemed to fit really well. Now obviously I do have a little magnet to fit in uh, for the top piece and I'll probably put a little magnet down there to hold uh, the nose cone down uh, and I'm, again you've seen me rip up motors here on YouTube before so you know that I've got plenty of magnets. Uh, and I will be using two, one magnet glued, well, let me show you on here. I'll have one magnet mounted in there, and I'll have another little main magnet probably mounted in here, down here, and then make little holes for them. The opposite magnet's down in the front of the nose and on that plate there as well, uh, so that that camera is really, really well stuck down on it. So that's my mini Skywalker build so far. Um, any comments uh, or suggestions on this build would be fairly fairly welcomed uh, I'd love to just to hear what you think of this build so far and you can do that uh, by popping a comment underneath this video uh, I would really really appreciate your feedback um, and just to quickly recap on the motor mount something which I didn't mention uh, is that if I put the wings like so is that when the motor's pushing forwards, it's pushing into the back of the wings, and of course the wings are also uh, elastic banded down uh, on there, so the thrust is always going to go into the wings, and of course if that motor angle is off a touch, so let me just sit that down flat, is that you'll see that the motor angle is pointing down, is that if I do need to tweak that, is that I can pop a washer on the bottom, or a pair of washers on the bottom, or a pair of washers on the top, uh, and again, I won't know this uh, until I go and chuck her out for a maiden flight. So tonight, uh, I will be finishing off the FPV system and getting the little video transmitter recessed in here on the side. Uh, I also need to get the servos in. Uh, and once I've got the servos in, especially the tail servo, I will then be able to glue down the top elevator fin. Uh, and as soon as I've got that done, I think we're almost ready for a maiden and of course I will double, just let me just stress I will check the uh, C of G oh and I've also been and checked the uh, motor current usage it uses a whole wait for this 
13 amps on full throttle. Uh, now I haven't me measured the thrust, uh, but I can tell you just like from personal experience, it's probably enough thrust, okay? It is definitely enough thrust. It will want to, it wants to move off the desk uh, very, very quickly when that's on full pelt, which is really, really promising because of course I've got another five amps available to me in the ESC, uh, which means that I can up the prop. So from say a 5040, to a 5045, uh, and I also do, and I happen to be in possession of some 5055s, um, but I think those are probably drawn far too much current. So, yeah, like I said, we're just after some efficiency for the flight, seeing that we're well underneath the amperage on here uh, is a real well, the current ratings, uh, that's a really, really good sign. So, like I said, any comments, good, bad, or ugly, I would really, really appreciate your feedback. Uh, and again, you can let me know in the comments section underneath this video. So with that said, from myself, the Mini Skywalker, cheerios!